one of my good friends, Steve Cuss, um, the author of the book, uh, Managing Leadership Anxiety. He put this quote out on Twitter that I, w- I want to read here at the beginning, and I want it to allow us to, to press us deep into the word. Listen to this quote. This is from Steve Cuss. He says, there is a radical difference between feeling seen and feeling exposed. Seen feels loved. Exposed feels threatened. There is profound truth in that quote. The difference between being seen and being exposed. And it's a profound truth that that, that I see resonating through Psalm 139. A Psalm of David. A Psalm that celebrates the intimacy of being seen, of being fully known by God. It says this, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. There is intimacy in that idea of being known, where there are no parts of you that are hidden away, where there are no aspects of you that have been positively spent, not higher, not lower, you're fully known. And David says, Lord, let's be honest. You know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Have you ever experienced that? Maybe with a close friend, maybe with a spouse, maybe with the Lord. That it's like, it's like people know you so well, they can anticipate your movements. People know you so well that, that after a conversation gets started, they can glance over at you because they know what thought is going through your mind. Do you know what it's like to be seen? Do you know what it's like to be known? Not cheaply seen. Not seen like watching a, a movie star on a, a, you know, in a theater. Yeah, you're seeing them on a screen, but they're not, they're not really seen by you. You don't know them. You just know the depiction of them. David is describing an intimacy that is far beyond a stage, far beyond a movie screen. It is one, like verse four, where it, before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You can finish my sentences, he says to the Lord. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. You guide me. You protect me. Because you see me, you know what I need. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. For where can I go from your spirit, David asks. And it's not a lament. It's an excitement. You see, whenever you're given to to darkness, to secrecy, That type of an idea of the spirit being wherever you are can be terrifying because exposure can feel like you're being threatened. The presence of God can seem threatening if you're given to to hiding, to secrecy, to being sneaky. But whenever you bring everything out into the light, fully seen, fully known, You can celebrate the omnipresence of the Lord. You can scream out in delight. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? But if I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths of hell, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Now notice this. This is interesting. David starts to expose the lie of the threat of exposure. He says, verse 11, If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, do you see it? Running away from God. Surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me. That secrecy can protect me. That darkness can shroud me. He says this in verse 2, 12. But let's be honest, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. You see, whenever you're engaging life in God without the elements of secrecy and shame, 
then God's presence in all places, his ability to see you wherever you go, is not a threat. It's a delight. Because in our heart of hearts, we long to be seen. He says this in verse 13, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Even before I had breathed air, you saw me. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. Before I was even in the womb, the idea of me was not hidden from you. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, as Adam was made from the dirt, the dust of the earth. Verse 16, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. David is saying this, you see me, every facet of me, whether it was before I was in the womb and even just a thought, whether I was in the womb, you were there. It doesn't matter where I go on this earth, where I go in the heavens, where I go, even in my disobedience, even there, you see me. <laughs> even there, you know me. So instead of running from this as if it is a threat, we need to learn to embrace it as the pathway to fully experience God's love. Verse 23 says this, it invites God, giving him permission to the path of love by being seen and known. It says, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. You see, there's a big difference between being seen and feeling exposed. Seen feels like love. Exposed feels like a threat. But here's the truth behind my good friend Steve's quote. A lot of the times the difference between seen and exposed has a lot to do with the way that you are engaging your secrets. If you have nothing to hide before the Lord, if you have nothing to hide from your spouse, if you have nothing to hide from your boss, if you have nothing to hide from your parents or from your siblings or from your friends or from your church, then God's presence is never seen as a threat, but as a welcomed balm to our hearts that are longing to be fully known, that are desiring to be fully seen. My challenge for you this week is this. Where are you trusting the darkness, hiding from being known? And instead, how will you step into the light to embrace the truth that God knows you, he sees you, and he always has? I love you guys. Have a good week.